we've drawn body plots where there were a number of cases where we made a guess as to what the magnitude and the phase were, say at the corner frequencies. And there are other cases where we might just be curious whether we uh, are on the right uh, track as far as uh, filling in different values. For example, at 1,000, we might want to check whether we actually, in fact, have the correct values for the magnitude and the phase. So here's a quick way to, uh, to do those checks for any frequency of interest. So imagine we're plugging in omega equals 1,000, and our attitude towards that would be that when we add 10 to uh, j times 1,000, that's very close to just j times 1,000. So the 10 sort of doesn't really matter in, uh, in comparison to the 1,000. And even the uh, 100 added to j times 1,000, you could treat as being very close to j times 1,000. So we can just sort of ignore some of these uh, points. And then uh, we have the j times 1,000 for uh, this term. And so if you just sort of treat this as a very rough approximation, these j times 1,000 cancel each other. And so all we're left with over here is 1 over 1,000 for the uh, magnitude. And then because we just have 1 j in the denominator, this would be roughly negative 90 degrees. Now, we didn't actually sketch in what this uh, value is, but uh, if we go one uh, additional tick mark down, that would be 1 over 1,000. So you can see that we roughly made the right decision on both the magnitude and the phase uh, for these, uh, for omega equals 1,000. Let's do the same thing for 100, where our approximation is that j times 100 plus 10 is roughly uh, going to be j times 100. And then we have j times 100 on the denominator. And then the second term is a little bit trickier because this is j times 100 plus 100, which in other words would be square root of 2 times 100 um, with an angle uh, actually of uh, 45 degrees. So the j times the hundreds are going to cancel. Well, so what we're left with is 1 over square root of 2 times 100. So in other words, here's 0.01, and what we should be doing here is 0.07 of 0.01, so roughly 0 0.0007. And then the phase should be roughly negative 45 degrees. We can do the same thing over here, where if we just plug in uh, j times 10, what we end up with for h of s is it's roughly going to be square root of 2 times 10 at an angle of 45 degrees, divided by um, j times 10. And here, the j times 10 is actually swamped by the 100, so we could say 100. So if you put this all together, the tens cancel, we end up with square root of 2 divided by 100 uh, at an angle 45 degrees minus 90 degrees. So we would have negative 45 degrees there. So again, we need roughly negative 45 degrees, which is what, in fact, we drew. And then over here, we want square root of 2 divided by 100, in other words, 0.0141, in other words, plus 3 dB from the 0.01 part. Let's take a look at this transfer function, which we've already uh, drawn the Bode plot of. And uh, suppose we want to evaluate the magnitude and phase at these sample frequencies. So here when we plug in 0.1, just think that 0.1 is going to be a very small number compared to the 1 here, so we just treat that as a 1. Uh, we have 0.1j squared, and then in the denominator, again, j times 0.1 plus 20 is very close to just 20. So what we end up with is uh, the 1 over 0.1 squared is actually going to be 100 divided by 20, so that's going to give us 5. And then we have two j's in the denominator, and that's just going to give us an angle of negative 180 degrees.
as for omega equals 1, here when we plug in 1 times j, that's going to cancel here so we get 0.2j divided by j times 1 squared and then the j times 1 is much smaller than the 20 so we might as well just consider that to be 20. So what we end up with is 0.2 over 20, in other words 0.01 uh, with an angle of uh, 1 uh, j in the numerator and 2 j's in the denominator denominator so that's going to give us negative 90 degrees. Let's move on to omega equals 20 where h of s is roughly going to be equal to so here the uh, j times 20 squared is going to be much bigger than any of the other terms so we have j times 20 squared divided by j times 20 squared divided by j times 20 plus 20 so these are going to cancel and what we are left with is just 1 over the equivalent of square root of 2 times 20 at an angle of 45 degrees. So we end up with uh, 1 over root 2 times 20 and s since this is in the denominator I'm just going to treat that as an overall number at negative 45 degrees. Finally uh, let's just plug in a very large number of a thousand. So h of s, when you plug in a thousand, you're going to get j times a thousand squared. That's going to swamp out any other terms here. We also have j times a thousand squared in the denominator here. And then j times a thousand plus 20 is just going to be approximately j times a thousand. So these are all going to cancel, so what we end up with is 1 over j times 1,000 or 0.001 with an angle of negative 90 degrees. What can we do with this information? Well, we could apply a sinusoidal input, say a cosine of 0.1t plus 2 cosine of 1,000t and immediately from this information we can make a, a rough guess so I'm gonna write an approximately equals here where for cosine point one t I know that I have a magnitude of 5 and a cosine of point one t minus 180 degrees that's my steady state output for this part of the input for the second part of the input I have a cosine a thousand t so that means I need 0 0.001 uh, although this is multiplied by 2 so I need two of those cosine of a thousand t with a phase of negative 90 degrees so uh, without actually using a calculator I can already make a rough guess for what the output is for this input again this is for finding the steady state output for sinusoidal input of course there's another way to proceed which is given a transfer function you can always find the exact magnitude and phase by plugging in j times the frequency so j omega inserted into h of s gives you a complex number with a magnitude and a phase so if you apply a sinusoidal input the steady state response is just going to be another sinusoid with the same frequency omega but a different magnitude and phase which are given by the m and the phi over here. So when we evaluate h of s plugging in s equals j omega it's telling us what that sinusoidal response is. And what we've been talking about more recently is how to make a rough approximation just by considering which terms are dominant in the transfer function.